Thank you very much for the great uh, honor to be delivering this uh, opening lecture. Yeah. Yeah, able to. And uh, I was wondering whether I earned uh, the, the right to this uh, uh, great privilege uh, because I organized uh, a continuous uh, conference in this uh, series and I probably, frankly, uh, fed uh, very well, in a broad sense, to uh, everybody who attended, uh, or uh, maybe because uh, the organizers here want to hear about my ideas, so I decided for the latter that we would talk about my ideas. Uh, nothing new. I will probably just <coughs> rephrase the things that uh, have already been uh, Said. So, for example, I will start. Sorry, I will start with a uh, dedication to my teachers of uh, uh, thermodynamics, because, as you uh, probably all share in this uh, audience, the uh, idea that uh, thermodynamics is a beautiful uh, subject, uh, and uh, the more you study, the more you you, you understand how much more you have to study, and so it never ends. So it's business, but it's business forever for all of us and for our students. And so, since we are teachers, we like to be somehow remembered, and I like to remember my teachers. So I want to talk about uh, general, uh, very general ideas. <laughs> and I was uh, listening to one of the, the lectures by uh, Feynman. Uh, actually, uh, Jim Keck, uh, in his uh, website, you will find uh, some of the handwritten notes that he has taken uh, directly from a course uh, by, uh, uh, given by Feynman of <coughs> mathematical physics uh, at Cornell in the, in the 30s, I think. Uh, and, uh, so I was listening to one of those famous lectures and he was talking about what makes a, a physical principle uh, great. Why do we call some, some principles great? And of course, here are the main ones, let's say, here, uh, energy, momentum, charge, uh, uh, the constituents of matter, but also thermodynamics, of course, belongs to the picture in the sense that the second law uh, and uh, entropy also, maybe should be listed as uh, uh, somehow related to great, great, uh, great uh, greatness. But so what, what is it makes it uh, great? And uh, I think that the message uh, that uh, Feynman gave was that uh, it's the fact that it, uh, it applies to every model that we make of the physical reality. Because after all, all that we do is make models of what we think is a physical reality. And uh, over the years we realized that uh, these models are good only if they uh, satisfy certain uh, criteria, certain principles. And those principles that need to be satisfied by all models are great. So the greatness stems from the generality of the uh, fact that it if you have a model, you wake up in the morning with a model and it doesn't satisfy the energy conservation, well, uh, you just uh, throw it in the basket and change, uh, and change, change to a better model. So, uh, my question uh, for us today is, do we gain some uh, great principle from non equilibrium thermodynamics? And I will end, I will begin with a question mark and end with a question mark, but of course uh, you may read in between the line my uh, ideas. For example, that's, uh, uh, I will devote the first part uh, to uh, just standard uh, in equilibrium thermodynamics. Uh, near equilibrium, I call it. 
where we can apply the uh, local equilibrium uh, assumptions and the set of assumptions that are uh, required for the, for example, uh, just continuity so that we can describe uh, properties of the continuum by fields. Uh, equilibrium so that you can uh, <coughs> state that even if you are in an equilibrium state, you still use uh, the relations among properties that belong to an associated uh, stable equilibrium state, which is not far from your non equilibrium state. Plus, you make some assumptions about how uh, different uh, fluid elements or uh, elements of your continuum interact with each other. So, you define implicitly or explicitly um, the mode of interaction, which uh, I like to call uh, heat and diffusion kind of interaction. So, diffuse is time uh, interactions. And, and there you see the formula. You see a lot of formulas, but it doesn't really matter. You, know, you find the graphs later on. Uh, then you have refinements of the, of the theory. For example, you could uh, add uh, to uh, your local equilibrium uh, 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 kinetic energy, potential energy, so it would be like gravitational or um, electrostatic. You can even uh, add uh, non local aspects uh, uh, that, uh, because uh, high gradients in uh, uh, like interfaces, even at equilibrium, imply uh, a contribution to the. Uh, the energy, just the, the, the square of the gradient. And uh, uh, as you take uh, the derivatives of this relation with respect to the amounts of constituents, you get the total potentials that have may, may have uh, uh, these additional uh, potential uh, contributions plus also some non local contributions. <coughs> and you, we end up with the usual uh, uh, relations. Once you apply those uh, assumptions, to the conservation equations of energy, uh, constituents, and if you have it, uh, a momentum and uh, a charge, you uh, end up with the same relation that uh, allows you, through the energy balance equation, to calculate uh, the uh, density of production of entropy uh, by irreversibility, sigma, which turns out to be given by uh, some of products of fluxes and forces. And you can uh, typically we like to uh, write it in a shorthand uh, format by putting uh, these are the reaction rates, so these are the flux of energy, constituents and charge, and this is a flux of momentum, and uh, the forces uh, conjugated to those are the chemical affinities, the gradient in the inverse of the temperature, the gradients in minus the chemical potential of the temperature, the static, the field, and uh, the, the uh, strain <coughs> price tensor. And this <coughs> sort of generalized scalar uh, product, it's simply the contraction of these various things. So the uh, scalar is contracted by simple multiplication, uh, the vectors are contracted by scalar product, and uh, Tensors are contracted by uh, two index uh, contraction to end up with the explicit formula like that. And it's easy, as soon as, as, soon as you add uh, uh, phenomena, it's easy to get complicated and uh, lost in details. And of course, if you get really lost in details, always go back to the book by the Grot and Mazur, and uh, there's nothing wrong there. So if you, if you have something different from there, you're wrong. <laughs> I like to call this uh, expression an extrinsic determination. Extrinsic in the sense that it depends only on your modeling assumptions and the balance equations. It does not depend yet, it does not contain yet the properties of your particular material. It doesn't contain information yet about uh, how your particular material uh, behaves when in an equilibrium. But it does have uh, uh, already an interpretation, also for those of you who like uh, uh, to think in terms of exergy, because after all, entropy production is uh, associated with the rate of uh, <coughs> destruction of uh, exergy. And so this is what happens whenever you have a chemical reaction that occurs uh, down uh, uh, decreasing free energy, plus uh, uh, down uh, 
temperature gradient, uh, diffusion flux down the chemical potential gradient, the electric current down the voltage drop, capillary flow down the pressure gradient, momentum flux uh, uh, down a uh, uh, strain rate. Uh, so, you see, this is, these are all phenomena that regardless of the properties of material, uh, uh, destroy the uh, energies. Hence, the engineering application, one of the engineering importances of this, uh, uh, of calculating this game. Then the properties of the material, the intrinsic part, comes in when you try to write how uh, for a given off equilibrium state, in which, however, you still uh, uh, the local equilibrium assumption, uh, you still think in terms of uh, the existence of some temperatures, uh, chemical potentials, uh, in, 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 in some sense, the associated state or a frozen equilibrium state in the case of chemistry. So you like to uh, describe how the material um, uh, tries to restore equilibrium tries to go towards equilibrium. So, you have two pictures here. If you impose some fluxes, then you see that the, 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 you want to describe how the material uh, uh, resists to the fluxes by building up some forces that go against uh, and uh, try to re-establish equilibrium. And so you look for a, 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 a flux force uh, as a constitutive relationship. <laughs> Which will then give you an entropy production which depends, uh, which is a function of the flux. But you also have the dual picture, the imposed forces, um, then the system uh, uh, reacts by building up fluxes, again, try to establish a uh, restore equilibrium, and then you're uh, looking for a force flux uh, relations. Of course, these models, uh, constitutive models, have to be, uh, have to satisfy some, uh, some principles, some, some principles like the fact that at equilibrium there's no entropy uh, production, that off equilibrium uh, the, the entropy generation cannot be negative, you have the Nyonsaga reciprocity in your equilibrium as a condition, and we have three principles that return to that reception. So once you have one uh, of these uh, relations, you can, uh, uh, for example, linearize. You take a Taylor series expansion, and uh, there are no forces that the you, so this is zero, and uh, this first derivative which needs to be calculated at equilibrium, because you're expanding around equilibrium. So it is uh, an equilibrium property, which describes our equilibrium uh, behavior, um, is what we call uh, the generalized Monsaglia. Uh, Resistivities, and so you get this famous linear uh, force uh, flux, uh, actually a flux force relation, which gives you an expression for the entropy production in terms of the fluxes, which is a quadratic form of this uh, uh, resistivities. And of course, you can just uh, swap the x's and the j's and uh, get the uh, force picture with the uh, matrix of uh, generalized uh, conductivities. And of course, this is the inverse of the, the other. It has to be non-negative. And then you have, but you're not done yet, because um, that matrix also has to be symmetric. But uh, the symmetry doesn't come from what you've seen so far. You, you need some more with, uh, additional uh, physical assumptions to uh, derive uh, reciprocity. And then you also have the principle about uh, symmetry. Uh, Pierre Curie says the symmetry of the cause is preserved in uh, its effects. So if your system is isotropic and there are some symmetries, those symmetries uh, prevent some of the possible uh, couplings. And so the possible couplings are uh, here. Only things, only phenomena of uh, the same tensorial uh, character can couple. So now let's go to uh, a 
an alternative way of proving the Alzheimer's reciprocity without going through the, uh, the evolution of uh, proof uh, uh, in terms of uh, microscopic reversibility and so on. And it's based on uh, this principle that I call steep ascent or deep ascent. So here is the idea. Uh, it's essentially geometrization of, of what you see. You have seen that uh, forces and fluxes are vectors, and that the entropy and production density is the scalar product of these vectors. So here's the, the two vectors in the picture. And so the, the, the scalar product is given, uh, of course, by the magnitude of these vectors, but also by, by the cosine of the angle two. <coughs> so let's work in the flux uh, picture. Suppose we subject our material to a flux J. And we are in uh, not too far from equilibrium, uh, so that uh, the gamma, the same gamma as before, like 1 over T, U over T, uh, represent uh, the states of uh, the real equilibrium state. So, so here is the, uh, the principle. The idea is that uh, for every given uh, uh, flux that you can that you impose to your material, your material uh, views uh, things in terms of a, of a lens so to speak, that we uh, geometrically represent by a, a metric on uh, <coughs> the, the manifold of, uh, of the forces of the X. So the X here belongs uh, somehow to uh, space. And in this space, you measure distances. <laughs> Since it's not flat, you need uh, you think of it in terms of like uh, Riemannian and geometry, so you need a metric in order to describe uh, uh, the distances and also lengths of uh, vectors. So, so in uh, uh, the simplest, uh, in the simplest uh, geometry, like an isotropic uh, metric, uh, uh, a circle is a circle, but uh, in a more generalized situation, a circle is an ellipsoid. Okay. So view uh, this metric as what defines this uh, ellipsoid, which uh, essentially says that uh, if you move from here to, to any direction, you, you, once you arrive to the surface of the ellipsoid, you uh, travel the same distance. Okay. So the equation of, uh, of this ellipsoid is essentially uh, equal distance traveled in one direction. And uh, the, the principle of the percent of the ascent simply says that uh, the, the system will choose the direction of the force vector um, in, uh, so as to maximize the entropy production. So this is the implementation of the principle that is also called maximum entropy production, which has been debated a lot. And I think this is a, a a uh, more restrictive interpretation of that, of that, uh, uh, of that uh, discussion. So once you, so you can view it also, you can view it uh, geometrically, since the scalar product, uh, um, you consider all the possible uh, directions. And of course, they are, they are the ones that have uh, a positive cosine, so you have to go in the same direction, because if you go in the uh, opposite direction, it gets negative uh, scalar product, so that's forbidden by uh, second law, but uh, in these directions, so these are all allowed by the second law, but the system doesn't choose uh, uh, all of them, it chooses only one, and it chooses the one that gives uh, the highest uh, value for this uh, scalar product, which you can construct by taking a, a vertical uh, uh, orthogonal line to the, in the flux J and seeing where it is uh, tangent to the ellipsoid, and that uh, tells you where the vector is. X actually chosen by the system, or let's say, uh, on Saturday used to say, nature chooses that direction. You can also write the, uh, the solution in terms of the Lagrange multipliers, uh, method of Lagrange multipliers, and here you get, uh, you, you do your math, you take uh, uh, 
the equation of the ellipsoid it was constantly multiplied by the Lagrange multiplier. And uh, you get in this relation which looks like the linear relation, but it's not because uh, R in this uh, framework is a function of J. So there is no, no linearity here. Only that if you then go uh, near equilibrium, then this R becomes the observer uh, matrix. And uh, the result is that since the matrix is by definition symmetric, uh, positive definite and symmetric, uh, you have built in the, the symmetry of the observer. So essentially, what you're saying is that uh, since the center of the ascent implies uh, observer reciprocity. Of course, you can work it out also in the other picture. Let me just uh, skip that. Uh, notice that uh, the Lagrange multiplier you usually uh, compute by putting back in the constraints. And here we have um, uh, in, uh, included it in the uh, matrix of uh, generalized uh, resistances. Uh, but you see, if, if I choose lambda equals 1 over 2, Essentially, the metric that I choose here is exactly uh, the, the, the inverse of the resistances, and therefore it's the generalized conductivity. So, with lambda equals one half, I get g equals l. And uh, some of you may uh, remember <coughs> that Gonzaga uh, himself produced the, the variation of principle in which he uh, says that nature maximizes. Uh, Precisely the same thing with the one half here. This was called a uh, uh, dissipation function, and uh, in, in some sense, this deepest entropy ascent gives you uh, that uh, it's compatible with the uh, uh, standard in all uh, uh, details. Now, of course. <coughs> There are more detailed uh, levels uh, of description that you choose, and so your uh, local equilibrium assumption requires additional state variables. And uh, the theories differ depending on what variables you take. Here I'm going to go quickly because I want to get to the conclusions, and uh, I do have all the details, uh, you can just uh, for uh, the record, so to speak. So, for example, in chemical kinetics, you would uh, put in uh, uh, reaction rates of, uh, of all reactions, but then you will choose some that are slow, which are the very controlling reactions, and some that are fast, which you assume that go immediately to equilibrium. So you, all you need to uh, model is the slow ones, the very controlling variables. Similar ideas go with um, uh, the, the, the big uh, literature that uh, goes under the name of generic uh, and um, which uh, has a similar idea. You take some uh, variables and you you write a, a generic uh, form of uh, the equation of motion for the slow uh, uh, variables. Uh, or you take kinetic theory gases, where the additional variables are probability distributions on the velocities of your various particles of different uh, type. From which you can calculate all other things. And as you keep going, you can list, uh, as I've done in one of uh, the, the recent papers, uh, uh, the various theories of non equilibrium that are uh, on the market, so to speak. And in all of them, you, uh, you have some state variables, more or less uh, defined uh, description. You can get, uh, you can write equations of motion uh, for uh, your state variables. This P gamma represents, look only at the picture uh, down below there. Uh, here your state uh, vector. Uh, here is the trajectory, time dependent vector. And here is the, the tangent, so the rate of change of the vector. And uh, as you write balance equation for the conserved quantities or for the entropy, see so the conserved properties at production term that are zero. That are zero it turns out that in all these theories, you can write the production terms as a scalar products between your tangent vector, which represents the rate of change of your state, and uh, let's call them the gradient of uh, the 
conserve quantities, and this uh, is the gradient of the entropy. So, how does the uh, steepest entropy construction go? Here is the picture. I have, first of all, to uh, make sure that the evolution stays on the uh, tangent plane which conserves the uh, conserved quantities. So it has to be orthogonal to the gradients of uh, the uh, conserved quantities. Then you take the local ellipsoid, which represents uh, the, uh, with respect to the metric of your system at that uh, state, which represents uh, how you measure distances. So as, if, when you reach the, the circle or the uh, inside, you have traveled a, a fixed distance. For a fixed distance, you're claiming that the, the system will choose the direction of steepest uh, descent. That's 25, you said 30. That includes questions from all your audience. Ah, OK, nice thoughts. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> it is the last one, by the way. Uh, so here's the entropy, um, uh, the gradient of in the entropy. I projected onto uh, the plane which uh, conserves uh, the properties. So that's my my force, and uh, I take the orthogonal uh, line and. Uh, and that uh, when it touches the ellipsoid, it defines the direction of the, uh, of the state, uh, the rate of change, and that is uh, the one that maximizes among all the possible directions uh, the, uh, the end of the production. You write this in terms of the grand multipliers, and that's the evolution equation. So you see, I am at the conclusions, and the conclusions are no conclusions, question mark. Uh, we have any great principles from uh, economic field and thermodynamics, I'll let you decide. Uh, certainly, uh, those that uh, uh, come from symmetry and geometrical considerations are the strongest uh, things that the history of physics uh, uh, teaches us about it. So, the principle is definitely based on uh, a strong argument about symmetry. So, that's uh, great uh, to me. Uh, the steepest entropy ascent principle. Uh, uh, it has also different names uh, because, uh, for example, we proved that, that uh, it's, very, it's equivalent to, essentially equivalent to the generic uh, uh, part of uh, the, the dissipated part of generic, uh, uh, or it's an implementation of what people have claimed as maximum entropy production uh, principle. Uh, here we have uh, people have proved that uh, Boltzmann equation, Fokker Planck equation, chemical kinetics are. Can also be cast uh, in this uh, frame. And uh, uh, last uh, comment very recently, I just discovered uh, a few uh, weeks ago that uh, there is a hot topic in mathematics that have been, uh, has been uh, growing uh, recently. It goes under gradient flows in metric spaces. It's precisely the same thing, uh, only for mathematics, and the mathematicians like it because. Uh, it, uh, it's a nice framework in which they can put uh, partial differential equations of the diffusive type in, uh, uh, in the variational format. And uh, the metric that they talk about is the, it's called Wasserstein, but don't ask me because I, I haven't studied it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paolo, for your very uh, good timing. Questions? Uh, yeah, that's I've seen. No. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gianpaolo, for explaining this so well. Um, I have a elementary question. You say that the steepest entropy ascent is the implies microscopic reversibility, which implies the own cycle relations. So, um, do you then? Can you then say that the establishment of the Soliet equilibrium is a consequence of the steepest entropy ascent? I like the question. I, 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 I'm not sure I said exactly what, uh, what you said in terms of the uh, equivalence of uh, microscopic reversibility and steepest entropy ascent. 
what what I, I can prove is that I can substitute Microsoft microscopic diversibility to obtain uh, reciprocity. I'm not so sure uh, that I can go the other way around. And so the equivalence, I don't know. But in, but regarding the Sore equilibrium and Sore effects, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, yes, steep percent to percent does imply those. Uh, steep percent to percent is just the framework in which you can uh, um, in which you can rationalize all these uh, phenomena. So, uh, like all principles, like that, uh, minimum action principle is a framework in which you can rationalize uh, mechanics and the equations of motions of mechanics. So that's the idea. <clears throat> it's only modeling. There's nothing, uh, there's no God or something like that. It's just uh, effective modeling of uh, physical reality. Okay. Yeah, one more question. Do you have a government of technology? Um, I think that I'm asking this question from a state of complete ignorance of, of this topic of non equilibrium and dynamics. But um, how is it that, uh, how does the principle of Entropy, maximum entropy ascent. How does that uh, account for metastable states, such as the non-equilibrium that we have between fossil fuel reserves and the atmosphere, and uh, also the fact that with human will we can unleash a sudden, if we wish, um, creation of entropy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, stability of equilibrium, the thermodynamic, the, the equilibrium, what is usually called thermodynamic equilibrium, is just a stable equilibrium. Um, and that is really a globally stable equilibrium. Whereas a metastable equilibrium is just locally stable, but if you have a large enough perturbation, you can go, um, you, you, you can get uh, to, uh, and an equilibrium state that takes you far away, like in uh, combustion. No? So, uh, and a fuel mixture, uh, until you light the spark or, you, or, or raise the temperature enough so that you reach the ignition temperature, is a metastable equilibrium state. So, uh, that one you can model as a thermodynamic equilibrium state for certain purposes, maybe until you don't like a spark, then you can model it as a frozen equilibrium. Forget about chemical reactions. But as soon as you like the spark, that becomes an equilibrium state. You have to change the model, uh, it essentially change your system description. You have to include the chemical reactions, and that will evolve towards a, a chemical, a complete chemical equilibrium, which is the combustion products. So, uh, and this part, will be described by chemical kinetics, and chemical kinetics uh, is in this framework. Thank you very much. Time is up. Thank you.